والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم وجزاكم Father Shakil there from the United Arab Emirates Okay, so we've got a question here, quite an interesting question uh, from the sister. It says, my name is uh, Noida, I'm from the US. It seems no matter what I do, my du'as are not being answered. Uh, it's interesting because this is the month of du'a itself in Ramadan. No. Uh, she wants to know how to best go attain Allah's mercy and his acceptance of my du'as in this time. In the course of uh, addressing the ordainment of fasting in the second chapter of the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, mm-hmm. And after Allah the Almighty ordained and prescribed for the believers to fast in order to obtain taqwa, righteousness, in the middle of that, in the middle of this ahkam, Allah the Almighty stated that, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٍ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانْ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُ بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ Well, the verse First of all means it's approximate meeting. O Muhammad, whenever my servants ask you about me, concerning me, because there is a reason, there is an incident where the companions or some of whom came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Ya Rasulullah, is our Lord nearby so should whisper whenever we are invoking him or is he far away that we have to uh, cry out loud? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered, whenever my servant asks you concerning me, Tell them that I am near. How near? The hadith and the prophetic statements explain that the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah the Almighty is nearer to any of us than his own juggler vein. And this is also in the Quran. وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبِلِ الْوَرِيدِ So Allah knows what's in your heart. And then when you interpret it through your invocations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very near. And this is a meaning of whenever we say after lifting up from Ruku' and rising up, we say, Sami Allahu liman hamida, which literally means that Allah has heard, Allah understood, and Allah will deliver. That's different than the hearing of others. Sometimes you hear and you ignore. You hear and you don't understand. You hear and you understand, but you're not able to fulfill the demand or the need of the person who's been begging you. This is totally different with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None of that is true. Allah hears. Allah understands. Allah is able to fulfill. And that is the meaning of سَمِعَ Allahu liman hamida. So Allah is teaching us that. إِنِّي قَرِيبٌ I am very near to you indeed. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي so, It's so amazing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Let them respond to my call. Who's calling whom? Allah is calling us to call him. To invoke him, to ask from him. If you ever ask, only ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you ever seek help, only seek the help of Allah the Almighty. So let them respond to me and believe in me. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, making dua is the ultimate ibadah. Ibadah, the best form of worship is to invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when you raise your hands and you say, Oh Allah, that means you are unifying Allah in His Lordship. You're unifying Allah in worship. You realize and you admit that no one else could fulfill your demand but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then with all the verses which support that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listens to your dua and He answers your dua, some people are still not sure. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with my dua? Maybe because I'm not supplicating in Arabic. Maybe I'm doing something wrong that Allah is not answering my dua. We explain in details before almost in a whole episode that a dua has certain cases and conditions. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, sometimes you ask Allah for things which are harmful for yourself. How many times that you sisters, whenever you're upset with your son, you invoke Allah to punish him? What if Allah responds? What if Allah answers your dua and he punishes your son or cripples him because of your dua? Will you be happy? No, you say, I'm saying, oh Allah, but my heart is denouncing that. وَأَدْعُوا الْإِنسَانُ بِالشَّرِّ دُعَاءَهُ بِالْخَيْرِ Sometimes the person invokes Allah sincerely from his heart. He wants something to be achieved and to obtain it. And he doesn't know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not answer because he loves him. If he gives you that, that would it change your life. 
will deteriorate your iman, will decrease your faith, or will cause you to uh, be in a problem, or to gain some arrogance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Mm -hmm. So He only answers whenever He knows that is best for you. Sometimes not answering at all immediately, and saving the virtues of your invocation to benefit you as a voucher towards, for instance, a calamity which was going to befall you. So Allah uses this dua to protect you from this calamity. That's one way. And there is another way which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, or better than all of that, I would pile up all your du'as, invocations and supplications to benefit you whenever you need it most. When is that? On the Day of Judgment. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يُسْتَجَابُ لِأَحَدِكُمْ مَا لَمْ يُحَجِّلْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer the du'a of, of any few as long as he does not rush. They said, Ya Rasulullah, and how would he rush? How could one rush in making du'a? He said, he says, that the person who is making du'a says, I've been asking Allah and I've been invoking him and there is no response. So he stops. Mm -hmm. In that case, you are the only loser. So, ud'uni astajib lakum. Qala rabbukum ud'uni astajib lakum. That's a divine promise. Would always be fulfilled if you fulfill what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted from you, such as making sure you eat from lawful earning, such as uh, invoking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity, and you do not invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with something which is prohibited or harmful even to others.